Right? Well, uh, 38 is a bad night. Yeah. Not <laughs> since Michael Jordan did it in 1998 had we seen a guard have a conference finals game with at least 40 points and no turnovers. Oh. Chris Paul did it last night in the Suns game six clincher in Los Angeles and in the process earned his first trip to the NBA finals in his 16 seasons. Here's Chris Haynes. The Phoenix Suns did it, led by Chris Paul's 41 points. They defeated the Los Angeles Clippers in game six to advance to the NBA Finals for the first time since 1993. Chris Paul displayed so much raw emotions out there. He's been to this spot before, but never got over the hump. You got Clippers fans <laughs> waiting around, <laughs> you know, chanting your name and, and the way that it's a little bit of a Hollywood script, the way this thing went. I played six years here, you know, and a lot of these fans became my family. You know, if I could do it all over again, would I have left? Um, and I said, yeah, because I learned a lot of stuff along the way. You know, and this is like a storybook, getting somewhere that I've never been before, going against a team that I always be connected to. In your wildest dreams, you, you couldn't have, you know, put it together in this way. I was so grateful to be on his side, and then I, I really enjoyed watching him and his emotions after the game, I, I was like, I must be getting old now because I'm <laughs> enjoying watching other people. I kept asking him in the fourth quarter, you taste that? You taste it? <laughs> He's like, no, no. I said, all right, come on. We're going to keep playing then. We're going to keep playing. Five minutes to go, we up 21. You taste that? No. <laughs> he go back out, bang, hit the top of the three, key uh, three. I'm like, all right, he's still feeling it. So about, it didn't take, it took us about to get stuff out of the game in the fourth quarter. He was like, I taste it now, I taste it now. I'm like, all right. It's been a long time coming. We've seen the, we've seen the bottom, I'm waiting on this moment right here. Um, and Monty coming in, building the culture, you know, him leaving us with the preparation meets opportunity. And, you know, that, that was these moments right here. Um, but we still have work to do. I mean, this is, this is nice and all, but, you know, we're going for Larry for sure. Man, 31 of those 41 in the second half. I mean, he's he's been lights out in the in the last two clinchers for uh, for Phoenix. Yeah, I'm really happy for Chris Paul. Last night was like a home game for him. You know, even though they were on the road, he's comfortable playing in the building. His family there. He got some fans there. Billy Crystal was there, and I know he heard all the chatter. I heard my good friend Kendrick Perkins say, "Hey, his legacy is on the line." You know, he's used to blowing 3-1 leads, and I knew that he said, look, if I could take, take control of this game and win it, that's exactly what he did last night. You know, he came out and played. I mean, I just, I'm so happy for him. 16 years, first time in the finals. Uh, I would love to see two small market teams go at it. You never, you know, really see that. And uh, again, I'm just happy of him, proud of him, you know, future Hall of Famer. And, you know, I saw when they landed, they had like a little mini parade and, you know, this, you know, this moment feels good. You know, we all up here know how that moment feels when you get to the NBA Finals. Of course, it's, it's, you know, you still got to win four more games to win the championship, but I'm so happy for him. But the way he put his imprint in that fourth quarter, he was like, you know what? Even though I'm on the road, I'm at the crib, I done played here six years, I know the rims, I know the building, we get to my spot and do what I do. Yeah, the, the, the interesting thing about the first time, you know, can, I mean, for Chris and, and the rest of it, Devin Booker and the rest of it, and Monty Williams as well, the rest of the Phoenix Suns, this will be the most unique experience they've had for the first week. And then after that, it's basketball. That, that first week um, is, is so unique um, in your city. And then the first media day. When <laughs> I had never experienced anything like that. And you can't even prepare for it. Uh, the first media day, I don't know, because of COVID, might be different restrictions. But there were probably 300 reporters. So every beat writer from every team is there. Every writer from overseas is in, in, the, in one, on one gym. And they would put each per player on a podium. And then they wrote, they'd say five minutes, and they rotate, and you, and you get the rotation of questions. And so having that experience was fun, but it also can make you not focused if you're not careful. And, um, and it, it will take you a game or two to catch up into the series, and you might be down 2-1 or 3-1 in a series. So it's important for Monty Williams and, and, and Chris Paul being a veteran because he's, never, he's the veteran to get them there, but he hasn't been there himself. Right. It's to kind of understand that we enjoy the moment, but we can't live in the moment. And that's, that's, that's a tricky line. Would you agree with that, Chuck? 100%. Okay. Uh, I'm happy for my city. 
I'm really happy for the Sons organization and Chris Paul especially. You know, <clears throat> people ask me about regrets. And I said, I didn't have my team ready to play in game one. Uh, that's my biggest regret because the lights were too big for most of our guys in game one. You go back and look at the series, we, we only had really one bad game, and that was game one, to pick it back on Kenny's point. Like, I had been in Philadelphia, so I was used to bright lights, but I didn't realize the other guys were going to be like, oh, man, this thing is a really big deal. So I always tell people that's my biggest regret of my career, not having our team ready for game one, because Kenny hit it right on the head. It's a lot of stuff going on, like, uh, in the finals. Like, you don't even experience it until you get to the finals. Like, there's a lot going on in the regular season. There's a lot going on in the first round, second round, conference finals. But the play the finals are totally different. And I did not have us ready to play in game one. I regret that. Let me, throw this, out at, let me throw, throw this out at you real quick before we get a break, too. Tell me what you thought about Pat, uh, Pat Beverly and the shove on Chris Paul. Oh, it was a dirty play. And Pat Bev has got to realize, because remember, he, he remember when he tried almost hurt Chris in the play before that, and he was jumping around. So he he's one of those guys like he want to be the bully, and then when Chris got him back, he got pissed about it. So you, you know he danced around. Remember if you go back and look at the play in the game before, yeah, when he went on to Chris, he started dancing, and he can apologize now. But if you're gonna dance over somebody when you knock them down. When they get the best of you and say whatever they said to you, you got to take it like a man. So it was, it was Bush League, period. I, I like the way he plays. He's an emotional player. I'm an emotional player. I almost did that a couple times. He did it on purpose, but he just let the you know emotions get best of him. I'm not going to bash him like that because that's how it was. Like I used to talk smack, and then all of a sudden when I'm down, I want to meet you in the back by the bus. That's just <laughs> how it is. And, you know, to uh, add on to what the guys were saying, when you make it to the finals, everybody's happy. When I mean, I mean everybody. You got, you got people that, that, that never called you calling for tickets. I remember when uh, we, we beat the Bulls. So now that we beat Mike, we ready. Because I think we had beat y'all twice. Like, you know, we know it's going to be a tough final. But so we had 10 days off. Oh, so we was partying and doing parades. I had appearances at Disney. I was doing it. And it was just so happy. And then, you know, like you said, like, you know, when y'all came out, and y'all, you know, smacked us in the mouth those first two games. Like, it was, you know, too late by then. So, you know, people in Phoenix, be happy, but don't be too happy. Yeah, I, I, you know, Pat Bev, he's Dennis Rodman of this era. Like, if he doesn't play on that emotion, he's not as good. So, it, but it takes him to that. Excuse me? It does. You know, I'm talking about in this era, in terms of, like, thought Excuse process. Me? The way Pat Beverly plays, if he doesn't play on that emotion, he's not an NBA player, possibly. Uh, listen, we all like Pat Beverly. Please but don't, it, don't it, compare it, him to Dennis But in terms Rodman. of playing on emotion, Please I'm just stop. trying to give people comparisons. Please stop. So, so, uh, so I, I think that he, he understands say, that he uh, did. Please right. stop. He understands. <laughs> we, got a, we got a split. Uh, Bucks and Hawks. Uh, Game five. Take. 8.30 Eastern. Chico, please. <laughs> <laughs> Have a